Chances are, if you're watching this video, I probably just asked you a question you would never expect to hear in a sermon. What is your favorite sandwich? I probably asked you to think about it and then turn to your neighbor and describe it in great detail. And then I probably asked you to say your sandwich, your favorite sandwich, out loud. Perhaps your favorite sandwich is a homegrown tomato mayonnaise sandwich with salt and pepper. Always with Duke's mayonnaise, too. Or maybe your favorite sandwich is the tried and true peanut butter and jelly sandwich with either crunchy or creamy peanut butter and whatever flavor of jelly you love. I happen to be partial to strawberry. Or maybe your favorite sandwich includes cold cuts stacked with cheese, lettuce, tomato, in between two slices of bread. Or maybe your favorite sandwich is the BLT, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. No matter what your favorite sandwich is, I bet nobody's answer to the question was just two pieces of bread stacked on top of one another. I mean, even a mayonnaise sandwich includes mayonnaise, and that changes the taste of everything. But I doubt anybody's favorite sandwich, when given the choice, is just two pieces of bread. Because you know, what makes a sandwich is what's in the middle. What's in the middle makes the sandwich. And so as we look ahead to Holy Week, let's not build ourselves two pieces of bread stacked on top of each other sandwich. Instead, let's pack it with all that takes place in the middle. I want you to think about one slice of bread as Palm Sunday and another slice of bread as Easter Sunday and build a better sandwich. Build a better sandwich. Between now and the next time we gather, we're going to continue a journey and it's going to be very much an investment of time. A very much an investment of your time and your energy. But if you take this journey, it will be so worth it. And you will have a sandwich unlike any other sandwich you have ever had. So we're going to continue this journey through the week. And maybe we're going to go into places we have never been. Maybe trying to see the community around us, not through our own eyes, but through the eyes of Jesus. See the brokenness and the beauty, the pain and the joy, the hope and the suffering. See and love those around us as neighbors, as family. And we're going to get our feet good and dirty through our travels between now and and Monday, Thursday, just like the disciples did back in the day as they followed Jesus into the cities, into the dangerous act of loving their neighbor as themselves. We need to walk this journey through Holy Week. We need to walk with Jesus so when we arrive at the door at St. Anne's on Thursday evening, the dirt we carry on our feet will have been from this journey from Sunday to Sunday. And when he kneels down and gathers our feet in his hands and loves us like a child, a frightened, scared, awed child, we will rest in his tender mercy and allow our feet, our hearts, our minds to be cleansed. 
and we will take in the bread and the wine and feel them pass across our lips, across our tongue, souls, and remember, remember, remember again the sacrifice Jesus made in order that we might be redeemed. I don't want to miss that. I still hold my breath when the body of Christ is broken. Broken for you, broken for me, broken for our neighbors and those we will never know. And then, when the table has been cleared, we will watch as the room transforms from the upper room to the tomb, prepared to receive the body of Christ, to hold the space as barren and empty, creating the pain deep in our hearts that this sacrifice of Jesus is for us. With our feet clean and our hunger and thirst satiated at the table, we will sleep, even though Jesus will ask us to stay up and to stay up with him in the garden and pray. Our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak, and we will drift away, drift away, until we hear the commotion. And when dawn breaks on Friday, Jesus' fate will be certain. We need to walk this journey with Jesus to Friday. Stand as Pontius Pilate washes his hands clean, sentences Jesus to death by hanging on a cross, a death that was reserved for those to be made an example of for the rest of the community. I need to hear the chiding and cruel remarks of the guards, see the pain in my Savior's eyes. It was my own cry of crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, that put him on the wrong end of a whip. And when I see his eyes filled with pain, only then can I also see the depth of his love. I need to walk this journey all the way to the place of the skull, to Golgotha, and watch as they hoist him high between two criminals. I need to see him there so when he cries out, it is finished. I will hear that in his voice and feel my own heart torn in two. And with my broken heart, a restless night will be spent as we journey on towards Saturday. I need to walk this journey to Saturday. Humbled, weary, mournful. Where is he? I need to walk this journey in the company of others who share in the pain, but also in the hope. Where is he? This question is the beginning of a deeper mystery, a promise fulfilled. And by walking this journey to Saturday, we get to experience the answer firsthand. When we arrive here after the sun sets and we kindle a new flame, and hear the whole story. We will be surrounded by others to share that new flame with, and then I can exhale, celebrate, remember, cry out in the same voice that shouted, crucify him, crucify him. But this time, the cry will be a joyful cry, one of great celebration. We need this journey. We need this journey to hear the whole story. We need to do this with one another and walk with one another as we are all part of the body of Christ. We need to walk the journey together so we are indeed walking with Christ through the longest night and the darkest day until we reach the empty tomb We don't need any fancy footwear or any high-tech gear for the journey. We just need to show up, to risk being scared, 
to risk putting some time aside and allow ourselves to completely be exposed to the rawness and the realness of this story. And I know that when we show up to walk, we are walking together. And you can have your two slices of bread stacked on top of each other and call that a sandwich. You can come for Palm Sunday and come for Easter and miss everything in the middle. Or you can risk time and energy and hear the whole story and be nourished by the whole journey and understand completely that what is in the middle makes the sandwich. So I'm inviting you to come, come and journey, come and experience the heartache and the joy, and don't miss the opportunity to feast and feast well on this Holy Week sandwich. Amen. <laughs>